Hi everyone and welcome Movie Man Chatty here with another Blu-ray haul. This one is for February 15th, 2018 and I've got tons of movies to talk about right now. This is a vast look at the landscape, almost at the entire landscape of the last hundred years of cinema. We're only going to cover really the last, or I should say, just 70 years of cinema from the 1930s to the 1990s. So here we go and hopefully you enjoy the Chatty Show. The Movie Man Chatty Show. Okay, so the first one we're going to talk about is King Kong from 1933. Start off in 1933. This is the original King Kong, the one with the great special effects of its day that has lasted the test of time. They still look beautiful and great and wonderful. This is a wonderful film. I'm so glad to add it to my collection alongside the remake from 2005, which I love as well. And this one has a really nice slip cover. And let's just show you really quick that it has... The, Probably one of the original posters from the film. Tons of special features. How can you go wrong for any King Kong fan? And I think I got this for about 10 bucks at Best Buy. So I'm glad to, happy to add this to my collection. Moving on, let's go to the Best Picture winner of 1939. That would be Gone with the Wind. First time I ever saw this film was in 2007 in the theaters with my mom. And for a four-hour film, it is definitely one of the greatest four-hour films ever ever made completely entertaining from beginning to end and I really love this film and I definitely would sit down but I'm glad to have it on blu-ray I do have it on DVD but I think I prefer to actually go to the theater and see this movie again sit there for four hours with a great intermission uh, just a timeless classic and happy to have it part of my movie collection once again okay now we're gonna go to one of the greatest well we've that's the 30s 1930s goodbye 1930s let's move on to the 1940s with one of the best films of the 1940s and a great Christmas movie and a great film in general and is shown every year at Christmas time it's a wonderful life I actually saw this for the first time within the last 10 years of my life uh, and I never really saw this film growing up it was on and I always remember the ending and the, the great ending and or the actually the last great act of the film uh, but I never actually sat down and watched the entire film from beginning to end when I went to the theaters uh, with my family and just really enjoyed it. This one has a really nice slip cover. Slip, slip cover. Um, it also comes with, I think, two Blu-rays, and you get the original black and white version. And for some reason, they have the colorized version, which I never ever plan to watch. I will always watch the black and white white version. And again, another nice film to add to the collection. I think I also got this for ten bucks at Best Buy. It's definitely worthy uh, of anybody's collection. Um, it's just a classic. It's a wonderful life. It's a classic. It's beautiful. It's a wonderful life. Okay, next. Now we're done with the night. That was of 1940. That's all I had. Sorry, folks. Uh, we're moving on to the 1950s with I have a little handful of these films from the 1950s. Here's a film that I did see uh, at home for the first time in the last few years, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I haven't seen it again, so that's why I got it, and I think I got this uh, for like five or six bucks. Bucks, sorry. Uh, it's all about Eve. This is a Betty Davis uh, uh, driven film. I think Marilyn Monroe is in the movie. And um, that's all the the actors that I really recognize. I, I'm guessing she probably had a smaller role. I think this is Marilyn Monroe. So that's Betty Davis. I think that's Marilyn Monroe. I, I, I like to believe maybe, maybe, uh, yeah, I don't, <laughs> it's been so long since I've seen this film. Um, I'm sorry, uh, but I, I believe that she was in this film. Um, if I'm if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I apologize. Uh, but I haven't seen it in a while. I do remember really enjoying this film, especially Betty Davis' performance. And uh, I got it so I could actually sometime, hopefully in the near future, watch it again. Uh, I think I got this at Best Buy for a pretty decent price, so I'm excited. This one, uh, Betty, uh, this one is from 1950. So here we go, starting off the 1950s. And I, I believe this movie was nominated for an Academy Award. Uh, many Academy Awards, it says, uh, including Best Picture. It's definitely uh, a great film. And again, glad to have that a part of my collection. Moving on, I think we're going to 1955. Uh, I think both these films are from 1955. Uh, I think I'll just do them all at the same time. Uh, we have Rebel Without a Cause. I have yet to... I've seen this film, yes. I've yet to... I've seen this film. And surprisingly, this movie is rated PG-13, of course, when it probably came out in 19... Uh, 55. There was no rating system, so maybe it was rated nothing. But now it's rated PG-13 uh, because of whatever. Um, but I, I, I've only seen this one. I've only seen this James Dean movie. I haven't seen Giant yet or East of Eden. I have, I've yet to see those films. I need to watch those films, and you'll probably tell me, Chad, 
go see those movies. But I have seen Rebel Without a Cause. I think I got this at Big Lots for about five bucks. And I did enjoy the film. I didn't love this movie. I do love the performance, of course, by James Dean and Natalie Wood. Uh, but I, I don't remember really loving this film. It didn't really blow me away, but I imagine the, his other films will. But I was uh, entranced with the performance by James Dean, so I'm happy to add this to my collection, and I would definitely welcome to watch it again very, very soon. And the other one from 1955 is The Seven Year Itch. I have seen this film. Uh, all these films I have seen, of course, uh, but a lot of these older films I haven't seen in a while. And The Seven Year Itch, of course, this is the famous one, Marilyn Monroe. Uh, she has that famous uh, uh, part in the film where she's walking around and her dress goes into the air and it's so famous and she pushes her dress down and you know the air pushes her dress up and she pushes her dress down and it's that famous scene and I remember I've seen that scene countless times thanks to you know film class film history learning about film in, in, in college but uh, it wasn't until probably the last 15 years of my life where I actually finally watched the seven year itch and found it to be an incredible film. Billy Wilder, great director, and Marilyn, Marilyn, Monroe, uh, 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 Marilyn, Monroe, Marilyn Monroe not only was beautiful, but she was a great actress, and it's sad that she didn't live a long life. So there you go, 1955. But we're moving on to the late 1950s with The Fly. And this is 1950, 1958, I think. Now, I had seen the remake... Uh, because I know, I know my dad really enjoyed the remake, and he also loved the original. But I remember seeing the remake very young. It's one of those rare times where my dad would actually let me watch an R-rated film. And then later we did see The Fly, did see the original Fly, starring Vincent Price. I believe Vincent Price is in this film. Yes, yes, Vincent Price. He's definitely one of the stars of the movie. And what I remember about this film so much is what my dad always says sometimes. He always, well, because like, I think at the end when the... Sorry, spoiler. When the science, when the scientist fully is a fly, I believe he actually really becomes a fly. Like in the remake, he becomes like this weird Brendel fly. But in in, in which I do recommend the 1986 remake starring Jeff Goldblum, it's amazing. But in this one, I think at the end when he becomes a real fly and he's flying around and he's like telling people, "Kill me, kill me, kill me." And so when I think about that, uh, my 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 dad as I make this video, is very much alive right now. And so as I think about that, not that he's gone or anything, he's alive, uh, it just comes to mind him saying that. He just, out of the blue, I guess maybe if you've heard the movie was on, kill me, kill me, kill me, from the fly saying, you know, because he was trapped as a fly now. Anyways, that's, uh, I, I bought this film because I do remember enjoying it with my dad. And maybe we can enjoy it together. Uh, actually, on the 20th Century Fox, it actually has a little fly. Look at that. Little fly attached to the 20th Century Fox label. That's kind of cool. I just noticed that right now. Anyways, uh, it's a it's a classic horror film for the ages, and it, and of course has been remade, and it'll definitely probably be remade again because Hollywood has lost their minds and gone bankrupt with ideas. But that's okay. Anyways, uh, let's talk about another great film from the 1950s. Uh, this one's from 1959. We have North by Northwest. It's been many years since I've seen this film, but this is definitely one of the greatest Alfred Hitchcock films. Um, again, I haven't seen it in a while, but I'm glad to add it in my collection. Got this pretty, uh, pretty decent price. I think five, six, seven dollars at Best Buy. Um, I, I, but I do remember really enjoying it, and uh, just I, you know, a big fan of Alfred Hitchcock. And and there's a lot of films that I still haven't seen from him, but this is definitely one of the North my North by Northwest. Uh, a great film to add to my collection. So that one's from 1959. That, that's 59, 50s, over. 50s are over. They're done. Let's move on to the 1960s where movies got really interesting. And we start off with Spartacus. Now, I do have this one in my collection on Blu-ray already, but I wanted this one. I think there's some different special features, and I think this is an extended cut of the film. And I'm a sucker for Stanley Kubrick, even though this is... The film that is not really like the rest of his movies. This is probably the most Hollywood-controlled Stanley Kubrick film. Uh, but it's still a pretty good one, and I still need to watch it. And uh, this one says it's extended version with 12 additional mil uh, millets. Sorry. Tw <laughs> extended version with 12 additional minutes. Newly restored from large format 35mm original film elements. I don't know if the other Blu-ray... Blu-ray... Blu 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 <laughs> swallow the other blu-ray has that i don't really know if it does uh so that's why i picked this one up i think i got this one for like five five or six bucks 
anyways, um, I, you know, I haven't seen Spartacus in a while, uh, so I, I have two copies now. What's the excuse? I, I need to actually watch the film again. So 19, we're into the 1960s now with Stanley Kubrick's Spartacus. And moving on with 1960, uh, one of the best films, and a film that I always knew what it was about, long before I actually ever saw it. But when I actually eventually saw it, I found it to be one of the greatest horror films ever made, like, like it is, of course everybody would agree, and that would be Psycho. Uh, and this one has a really nice, this, this, this is really cool, and I, I'm glad I got this one, I think I got this for like 10 bucks uh, at Best Buy, and it just has a really nice uh, still book. Uh, still book? Is that what they're called? I'm just so confused. Uh, not digital book. This is not a slipcase, Chad. This is a still book. Yes, a still book, folks. Uh, <laughs> okay, Psycho. Uh, what you know? Every, everybody has, has said, and and I think I have a confession to make. I think I saw. I eventually saw this one, but I actually think I saw the remake first. Now, I already heard about the story and seen clips and the famous shower sequence. You know, there's the great shower sequence and everything. But I think I saw the re the remake from 1998 by Gus Van Sant first, I think I did, before I actually saw this one. But it still didn't affect uh, my feelings about this one. This one is the, one of the greatest films ever made. If you haven't seen Psycho yet, I highly, re highly recommend it. And please don't follow what I did and actually see this original one from 1960 first. Oh my gosh. But I feel better for confessing that. All right, on to the rest of the 1960s. And now I do own this on Blu-ray Blu already, but this is just a wonderful slipcover, and I could not pass it up. And it's one of my favorite films of all time, *To Kill a Mockingbird*. I just I love this film. It's one of the greatest films I've ever seen in my life. Um, I I just adore this film, and this is just a wonderful slipcover that I got at Target. I think for five or ten bucks a while back. I don't know if they're still available, but if you can find this and you haven't had this film in your collection yet and you love To Kill a Mockingbird, this is one of my greatest greatest films. I love I love this film. It's it's so close to my heart. Um, I remember seeing it for the first time in film school and college and I was so moved by it. Actually, first time I ever saw this film, I actually did get to see it on a print because this great teacher of mine Actually, when he showed us movies, he actually showed them. He actually would rent them from the studios. This is the mid '90s, and he rented the print of *To Kill a Mockingbird*, and that's when I saw it and fell in love with fell in love with this film. And I love the music and everything that goes with it. It's just a perfect, amazing film that I've seen multiple times, and I hope to see more. Now that I have two copies of it on Blu-ray, and I love the soundtrack as well, and I have the soundtrack, and I listen to that from time to time. But I love this, and I love this still book. It's just a great uh, thing to. I love it. Just love holding it in my hand. It just feels so good. This wonderful film feels so good in my in my hand. And and if you have not seen To Kill a Mockingbird, stop everything you're doing right now and watch this amazing film from 1962. That should have won Best Picture. I don't know what won Best Picture in 1962, but it should have been this film. Okay, even though it did win Best Actor. Okay, uh, moving on for the late 1960s. I think these are both from 1967. I believe. Uh, 1967 and 1967, uh, we have Cool Hand Luke, which I think is one of the best Paul Newman's films ever made, and I've seen this film countless times. I do like that this has like maybe the original rating on it still, like GP, like it's still. Why didn't this put PG or or G? This movie would probably be PG-13 today, but it still has the GP on there. So I I, I don't remember what that actually means. Probably. Parental guidance, but backwards. Um, well, whatever. Uh, it was the nineteen. It was late nineteen sixties, and the MPA was coming around to destroy America and dr destroy cinema by then. Um, but, anyways, uh, I love Cool Hand Luke, and I have The Graduate right here, which are all both from nineteen sixty seven. And I, I think this won an Oscar uh, for one of the actors in the film. I think George Kennedy won an Oscar, best supporting actor, and this one was nominated. I don't know if it won any Oscars. The Graduate. And everybody loves The Graduate. And I, I think The Graduate is a great film, but I would say I love Cool Hand Luke more. I don't want to compare these films by any means, but since they're both from the 1960s and 1967, I believe, I would say Cool Hand Luke is a perfect and great film, and The Graduate is a great film, but not perfect. And I really love the ending to this movie, and I love how the film 500 Days of Summer shined a light on the ending of this movie. So, uh... Anyways, uh, this just came to mind right now. But two great films from the 1960s. So there you go. 
Uh, let's go to let's have some fun before we get into some darker material. material. Uh, we're going to end the 1960s with a, a family film. Yay! Chitty Chitty Bang Bang! Chitty Chitty Bang Bang! We love you! I love you! Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, what can you say? This is uh, just... It, 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 this is just a great example of the 1960s and and the family movies that were coming out, especially near the end, and such things when we're changing and movies were getting a chance to be more provocative and dark and everything. Uh, and speaking of the next movie, I'm going to show you. But Chitty Chitty Bang Bang is a nice, fun family movie and great Dick Van Dyke and wonderful mu music from the Sherman Brothers. Uh, I don't know. I just I would. It's a movie that I would love to show. Uh, my nephews, my niece, and my kids in the future. So, yeah, wonderful film. I, I, I love it. It's a, it's a good movie. It's fun. It's, it's, it's silly. It's goofy, and it's perfect. It's a perfect family movie. There you go. Perfect family film. All right, now done with the family movies of the 1960s, let's conclude the 1960s with one of my favorite movies of all time, the best picture winner from 1969, and that would be Midnight Cowboy. I was almost going to say Midnight Express or Moonlight Kingdom. Moonrise Kingdom? Sorry. Uh, Midnight Midnight Cowboy. Uh, I remember seeing this film uh, in my uh, late teens. I think I rented it from the library, and it changed my life forever. Wonderful performances, just fascinating cinema. A product of its time, but also timeless itself. Uh, just perfect. It's this is this is one of the most perfect films in the entire universe of film in general. And I love Midnight Cowboy, and I'm happy to have it in my collection finally on Blu-ray. I have the soundtrack and the DVD, and now I have the Blu-ray, and I look forward to watching this movie again and enjoying it. And just love the performance by John Voight and Dustin Hoffman, and the movie itself is just. It's just, it's just perfection. It's one of the greatest films I've ever seen in my life. Midnight Cowboy. All right, moving on from the 1960s. Oh, that only took 17 minutes. All right, now we're going to go to the 70s, and then we'll conclude with that and move on to the 1980s and the 1990s, which I do have a lot more to talk about. So I'll probably go through the 90s and 80s pretty fast, I think. Hopefully I will. Okay, and let's go with the 70s. Um, so from the 1970s, we have the, the first film, the 1970s, Patton. I can't say that I love this film yet. I've only seen it once. I found it on Blu-ray. I wanted to see it again, so that's why I bought Patton. Don't have a lot to say about Patton. Just remember saying, thinking it did win Best Picture in 1970. But I can't say that I love this film. But I need to watch it again. And I love George C. Scott. I really love George C. Scott as an actor. And so I bought it so I could actually get around to watching it again. So put your comments below and tell me that I need to watch this right away again. Or maybe it's overrated. I don't know. I know the performance by George C. Scott is amazing, but uh, I did get this film because I really wanted to finally see it again, especially as an adult, and find out how I feel about it now. Okay, there we go. I don't have much to say about that. Uh, from the 1970s, I think I got a couple here. Let's see, 1970. Yeah, let's just go for this. 1972, we have Deliverance. Uh, just fabulous film from the 1970s. Uh, so dark and twisted and chilling and wonderful performances, wonderful soundtrack, wonderful setting, and just intense and great performances by John Voight and and Burt Reynolds and Ned Beatty. Oh, I just I, I, I think this is a great film and I'm glad to have it on Blu-ray. Uh, so the 1970s, I think I've got two films from 1973 that were both nominated for Best Picture, I think. Um, let me make sure. I think I think if I'm correct that The Exorcist this is the extended director's cut that came out in 2000. I've been wanting to get this film and I got I actually surprisingly got this. I think I got this for like 5 or 6 bucks. Um I've been wanting to I've been wanting to see this again. I I love The Exorcist, one of my favorite films. And I think this movie came out in 1973, I believe. And it was nominated, but it was up against The Sting. If I'm wrong, please correct me. But The Sting of course won best picture. This is also a a nice uh, steel book that I got around the same time I got To Kill a Mockingbird. And I love The Sting. I love both these films. They're different, unique, uh, but they're both some of the best films ever made. And I, I, I'm glad to have Sting in, The Sting in my collection. I've never seen The Sting 2, and I'm told never to, never to you never need to see The Sting 2, so I never will see The Sting 2. But I'm glad to have The Sting 
and The Exorcist, both great films from the 1970s, both films that were nominated for Best Picture, and of course this one won, and I think that they were nominated at the same time, I believe. If I'm wrong, again, correct me. I appreciate it. Uh, but I just I love the steel book that I got at the same time I got To Kill a Mockingbird. So there we go. And to conclude the 1970s, actually I have to go, yeah, let's see. Oh, so we had 1974, I got the classic Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I have the remake on Blu-ray, and I do have this on DVD, but I wanted to get it on uh, Blu-ray because I wanted to see it in better quality because I think the DVD wasn't great. And this has all new 4K digital restoration. So there you go. The classic horror film that really changed the genre and of course there are films today they're they're trying to you know encapsulate what was so special with this film and they haven't been able to and of course there was a remake recently that just came out a, a year or so ago that i haven't seen is it any good should i watch it i i don't know i probably won't um but i did like the remake from 2003 but of course this one is the classic 40 years old anniversary and of course toby toby hooper a great filmmaker who also made Poltergeist and made uh, the sequel to this film. Um, you know, a great filmmaker. I think he, I believe he passed last year or the year before that. I'm glad to have this one. And let's conclude the 1970s. Oh my gosh, with Westworld. Now this is a TV show on HBO, and I have to say the TV show is a bit underwhelming in my opinion. Hopefully the second season will be better. But I love this cheesy Michael Crichton directed pre Jurassic Park movie. Uh, I just remember enjoying this film growing up, watching it from time to time. A great performance by Yul Brenner, And uh, I think this is a good, solid, not a great film by any means, but a good, solid science fiction film. And of course, they're actually on the special feature, there is a, 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 the pilot. I guess they shot a pilot in 1980 called Beyond Westworld. And I don't think it got picked up, of course. But now it is an HBO show that a lot of people love. I think it's, uh, it's you know, it's okay. I hope it gets better again uh, as it goes along, but I love, compared to that f series, I love the original, and I'm glad to have this film uh, a part of my collection. All right, so that's the 1970s. We're done with the 70s. We're done with everything before the 70s for now, and let's move on to the 1980s. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so let's start with Time Bandits from 1981. Uh, grew up with this movie, seen it countless times, and I, I love this film. It's just a great comedy, wonderful comedy, and a wonderful film from the minds of Monty Python. So I'm glad to have that. This is a great edition right here from 1982. This is uh, Blade Runner, the collector set set. set. <laughs> what did I just say? Uh, collector set. Um, it has pictures in it. The discs are awesome. I have picked up Blade Runner 2049, and someday I will do a Blu-ray update for that in the future. But this one has cool uh, discs. There's cool discs. Lots of ton tons of pictures. Um, tons of pictures from the production. I'll show you some of those. And this is a really great uh, set uh, digibook. This one's a digibook, everybody. A digibook with pictures. And I believe I got this back in like 2014. Let's see. Does it say when I bought it? Um, let's see. I haven't. I've had this on the shelf for a while. And I can't remember when I bought it. Let's see if I, I bought it from Fry's. I think I got it for like eleven ninety nine, ten ninety nine at Fry's, and I bought it back in two thousand fifteen, November twenty fifth, two thousand fifteen. I bought this, and finally I'm showing it to you right now. Uh, it's just a really cool collector set. If you love Blade Runner, I do love the original Blade Runner, and this has five versions of the film, and I think I've only seen the final cut. I think I've really only seen the final cut and maybe the director's cut from the 90s. So, yeah, and there's the other two discs right there. I'll show you the, the third disc. Lots of special features. So if you're a big fan of this, I imagine you probably already own this uh, collector set. And I like a good digi digibook. Um, sometimes I wish all my Blu-rays were digi books, But, of course, that is impossible. This is the 30th anniversary edition. And now the movie is... Oh, so this one probably came out in 2012. Since that's 30, and, the, and so and sooner or later, this movie will be 40 years old. Um, but I, I think this movie and Blade Runner 2049 are a perfect companion piece and a great night double feature at the movies. So great digi book that I'm finally showcasing after such a long time. All right, uh, let's see, 1980, 1983. This is 1983. Are these all 1983? 
Let's go. Yeah, here. So we're going to go through 1983 really quick. We have Flashdance. Uh, really great film with a wonderful soundtrack. Glad to have this one. We have Bad Boys. Not the crappy Bad Boys from the 90s and 2000s. I hate those films. This is The Good Bad Boys with Sean Penn. He's going to prison. So we got uh, some great stuff from the 1980s. And we have one of the best soundtracks and best films from John Carpenter, 1983's Christine, Stephen King's Christine, John Carpenter's Christine, based on a Stephen King novel. So great films from 1983. Glad to have these together. All together. There we go. So uh, we're going to go to 1984, I believe. Let's see how many we've got here. I think I think I got two from 1984. And, and one's a slipcover. Look at that. The Karate Kid. Love The Karate Kid. This is a wonderful slipcover. I also have... Beverly Hills Cop, another great film from the 1980s, both from 1984, I believe. Uh, what can you say about Beverly Cop? It's probably one of the best, if not the best, Eddie Murphy film. So I'll put that down right there for right now. And to show you this cool-looking uh, still book from, that I got at Best Buy probably a while back. Let's see, do I have the receipt? When did I buy this one? Back in 2000, oh, uh, you know, uh, almost a year and a half ago. So, like November 2016. But there's the cool disc right there. This is just a really cool still book. And I, I love The Karate Kid. It's one of my favorite films in the 1980s. saw this so many times. And I love the fact that The Karate Kid was shot at Golf and Stuff in Norwalk, California. When they go on that date together, that's in Golf and Stuff. Norwalk, California. The best date ever in Golf and Stuff. So there you go. The karate, have the karate, you can go to golf and stuff right now and have the Karate Kid experience right now. It's still open. There's some things that are gone, but they still have golfing. And you can drive on the cars and the boats and play video games together, just like they did in the movie. Love it. Love the Karate Kid. It is the best around. Okay, 1985. Uh, let's see, are these both 1985? Yeah. So we've got Clue the Movie and Pee Wee Herman's debut big adventure directed by tim burton enjoy both these movies and this one has many endings of course and this only has one ending of course uh but uh, 1985 was a great year for comedies these are some of the greatest comedies ever made and i've loved i've loved i love films like this and i enjoy goofy movies like this love peewee herman so i'm glad to have both of these films from the 80s in my blu-ray collection wonderful smile made you look Okay, um, I wanted to say something else, but I totally botched it. I think I blew that one. Um, yeah, I think I did. But anyways, I love I love uh, those films, and uh, I'm glad to have those. Let's see, we have. Uh, so I think uh, you know um, because the Karate Kid was so famous and such a great surprise, they made a sequel two years later in 1986 with the Karate Kid Two. I like this film, and I would never own The Karate Kid 3, though I did rent that film a lot as a kid. But I think I grew up and found out that movie was pretty lame. But The Karate Kid 2 is a good sequel. It's not as great as the original, but it is a good sequel. And I like to see these characters one more time in an adventure together. So there's The Karate Kid 2, I believe, from 1986. And then from 1987, we have... <laughs> good Morning Vietnam! Yeah! Ah, oh, Robin Williams, miss you. A great film directed by Barry Levinson. Wonderful film to add to my collection. Uh, I haven't seen this film in a while, but I remember really enjoying it. And it's a movie that's not afraid to be funny, of course, but also not afraid to be a little dramatic as well. And I think um, Robin Williams was nominated for an Academy Award with this film. If it wasn't nominated for anything else, I don't really know. But uh, uh, I'm, I bought this one again because I haven't seen it in a while and I really wanted to see it again. So there's Good Morning Vietnam from 1987. And now we're going to do a little cheating right now. Actually, we'll wait till the end on that one. You know, just a little cheating on that one. But um, and there's some more cheating. There's that's more cheating. Yeah, there's a lot of some cheating going on right now because I have some collector set that actually kind of go into the 1990s and beyond. So we'll just do those next after I do these. Uh, from 1988, Working Girl, great film. Um, uh, Harrison Ford, Melly Griffin, and Sigourney Weaver. A really wonderful film about the working woman. And I wish Melly Griffin's daughter would learn something from that, except for she's making really crappy movies. She hasn't learned from her mother to make some really great movies about strong women. Then she decides to make crappy movies about women. It's very sad. But this is a this is a great film. Mike Nichols, who also directed The Graduate, 
Uh, I haven't seen this one in a while, so I really, really enjoyed it. I'm glad to have it a, a part of my Blu-ray collection. Uh, from 1988 as well, we have Dead Calm, a great thriller. Again, this is one film I haven't seen in a while, so I did buy it because I did enjoy it, of course. And I wanted to see it again. I really wanted to see it again, and I think I got this. I think it's a Best Buy for like four or five or six bucks. Can't beat that. But it's a really great thriller, and I like one of those thrills where it's kind of in one location the whole time for the most part, and you know these they deal with some interesting people and trying to get out of a situation in the middle of nowhere. There is nowhere to hide, isn't that true? Uh, so glad to have this. And this movie, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it, but I really enjoyed it. I'm glad. Glad to have it part of the collection. And to close out the 80s, kind of, we're going to go with 89's Black Rain. Um, I haven't seen this movie in a while. It's another one I wanted to buy again, and I also wanted to you know, slowly complete my collection of films but directed by Ridley Scott. This is definitely not one of his best films, uh, in my opinion, but uh, it is a good film, and I really just want to see it again, so I got it on Blu-ray from Best Buy. So... Really quickly, before we go on to the 90s officially, we're going to kind of talk about the 90s because we're going to talk about the collector set of Lethal Weapon, 1987, 1989, 1992, and 1998. So we're kind of moving on to the 1990s. This is a nice collector set flip cover. Uh, this has some special features. I wanted to really wait on getting this collector set because I wanted to get the director's cut of the first three films, but I can't find those anywhere. I don't know where they're at. And this wasn't bad. I think this was like 14, 13... 10 to 14 bucks at Target. And it's like, you know, fine. Just going to buy them all. I enjoy. I love the Lethal Weapon uh, films. I, you know, I would have liked to have seen a Lethal Weapon 5, but I think it's a little too late, even though they're still talking about it. And I know there's a series right now on Fox where there's new characters, but I think I'm fine with these four films, and we really don't ever need a five. Uh, but uh, maybe, uh, maybe in the early 2000s, it would have been nice to see them one more time because these films were so freaking entertaining. These are great action movies directed by Richard Donner, who's one of the best filmmakers. And a nice slipcover from Target. So there you go. And finally, before we move on to the officially move on to the 90s, I have the Chucky Complete Collection. And of course, this is not complete because there's another movie that came out in 2017 that I'll do on another Blu ray update because I do have that film and I have seen it uh, but it's got this is 1989 sorry 1988 I believe 1990 or 91 and then 92 or 93 when so we okay Child's Play came out in 1988 I think Child's Play 2 came out in the early 90s and then Child's Play 3 came out in 1991 so maybe this one was 1990 Child's Play 2 and then Bride of Chucky is 98 uh, Seed of Chucky is 2004, and then Curse of Chucky is 2013, and then, of course, last year in 2017, we had um, Cult of Chucky. So here's a nice little collector set I'll show you really quick before I move on. Um, here you go. Here's all the films. So you got... I like this because it does have Chucky. Come and play with me. No, that's not from that movie. Um, Heidi Ho, I'll be, your, I'll be your friend to the end. Heidi Ho. Okay, so this is the cool collector set, and here's all six films. Really quickly, uh, Child's Play is my personal favorite, and I like Child's Play 2 and 3, Scared Me as Kid. Bride of Chucky is silly and fun. Seed of Chucky, I think I hate. I don't really like Seed of Chucky. And Curse of Chucky, what a wonderful surprise that movie was. Um, if you want to know my feelings about Cult of Chucky, I'll hopefully do a Blu-ray update when I talk about movies of the year 2017, whenever I get around to doing that. Um, okay, I'll have to tell you right now. Cold of Chucky is, is decent. It's all right. Not that great. Uh, but I thought Curse of Chucky was a great film that kind of tied the series together in a nice, cool little bow. So there you go. I, I, I love the Chucky movies, and I hope they make them forever, because I enjoy watching Chucky. I think he's a cool killer doll. So scary to me, and goofy, and silly, and funny. And this is a nice collector set right there. So... Even though they have come out with another one that includes the other film, but I bought that one way before. I don't remember how much I got this for, but I think I got it for like 20 bucks. Can't beat that. All right, moving on to the 1990s, and then we'll conclude this video. Thank you so much for your time. We've been together for 34 minutes. I really appreciate it. All right, let's move on to the 1990s. I think first off, we'll go to 1990 with It. Not a great film, not a really good film, but I just love, I love uh, uh, Tim Curry in this film. 
And I'm not a big fan of the remake that came out just last year. I, I would probably never own that. I will see the sequel to that, of course. But, you know, I would just watch this film mainly because of Tim Curry. And that's about it. I think his performance is great. And speaking of comedies, let's talk about Pretty Woman. So here's Pretty Woman, 1990, I believe. I think it's 1990, one of the good films directed by Gary Marshall. I haven't seen this film in a while, but I remember really enjoying it and got it on, on uh, Blu-ray fine. And I think I got it pretty cheap. So, I again, this is one of the movies that I bought because I haven't seen it in a while and I'd like to watch it again. It's one of those movies that uh, capsulates the 1980s and 1990s in a nice little bow. And, uh, yeah, I remember liking the film, so I want to see it again, so I got it on Blu-ray to watch it again. Speaking, uh, speaking more on the great actress Julia Roberts, Sleeping with the Enemy. Uh, uh, you know, a generic, troped, cliched thriller, but it was not bad. I liked the film. I got it on Blu-ray pretty cheap. You know, it's by the numbers, but uh, decent one. I think it's solid because of the really uh, great performances by the cast. So uh, I like this film. And I will tell you, I actually had a poster of this film. I didn't see this film till later in life, but I think... Because I just love movies so much and I wanted posters all over my room. I got a poster of this film in my room at the time. I had posters all over the walls and I had a poster of Sleeping with the Enemy. And I never even saw the film. I don't know why I just put it on the wall. I don't know. Maybe because I was a fan of Julia Roberts. And one day I'd see the film and I actually liked it. You know, there was posters on the walls of my room that I didn't even... Finally, when I saw them, I didn't even like. So, But, of course, those, those days are over. Anyway, sleeping with the enemy. What more can you say? It's a, it's a, it's a thriller. It's decent. It's watchable. Now let's talk about a film that I didn't think was on Blu-ray ever. And one day I was in Target and I couldn't believe it. And for I think seven dollars and fifty cents, I couldn't believe it. One of my favorite films of the 1990s. A movie that always makes me cry. And that would be My Girl. I love this film so much. This movie means so much to me. It's part of my childhood, part of my young teener. I think I saw this film when I was a teenager, young teens. And I just loved Anna Klemsky in this movie and, and the entire cast. Dan Aykroyd, Jamie Lee Curtis, Macaulay Culkin, Anna Klemsky. And I just, I, I love this film. Like every time I watch the end, I think about the end. I think I think about, if I'm going to think about the end right now, I'm, I'm just going to lose it. I'm going to cry. Uh, just, I love this film. I'm so glad to have it on Blu-ray. I've seen this thing on DVD, and I and it was always in full screen. But this is the Blu-ray widescreen, and I just I love this film, and I can't wait to watch it again. I just can't. I love I love you, my girl. You're a wonderful film, and thanks for coming into my life. Okay, us uh, and uh, that was Macaulay Culkin. Moving on to more Macaulay Culkin. Let's talk about the Home Alone two movie that probably never really needed to exist, but I'm so glad it did because the first one was so popular. Of course, this is nowhere near the original, but it is fun film. I mean, it's definitely a remake just centered in to uh, New York and, and a wonderful performance by the cast. And Tim Curry's in this movie as well. And I think Tim Curry's performance alone was why you need to see this film. It's the 25th anniversary. There's really no special features except for a nice slip cover that I just like to play with. But I, I, I love Home Alone 1 and 2. The rest suck. And I'll never own them, but I will definitely own 1 and 2. All right, moving on, let's talk about a film I haven't seen in a while. Another one I bought because I just really wanted to see it again. And I think it's from 1992, and that would be Honeymoon in Vegas. Don't really have a lot to say, but, uh, you know, the cast is great. And I'm a big fan of Nicolas Cage, and his, especially in his when he was working in the 1990s. Uh, again, I haven't seen this movie in a while, so I got it. I uh, wanted to watch it again eventually, and it, I think I got it for like $3.00 at Big Lots. So what else you can say? Uh, one of the best films of the 90s is The Piano. Finally saw this later in life. Didn't really see it when it came out. It's a beautiful film. I think what I love most about this film is the soundtrack. I think I can't get enough of the wonderful soundtrack of this film uh, created by Michael Nyman. I think Michael Nyman is definitely one of the greatest composers. I don't know if the sc score was nominated. Of course it didn't win because Schindler's List pretty much won everything. But this movie of course won actress and supporting actress and best writing. Uh, it's a beautiful film. What can you say? Piano is is a gorgeous looking movie, and I'm glad to have it uh, with me now. Uh, one of the films from the 1990s. I enjoyed the first ones, and I, I liked the second one as well. And I wish there was actually a third one, and I wouldn't mind if it came out right now. And I'm talking about 
Wayne's World 2, everybody. Uh, I love Wayne's World 1. It's probably one of the greatest comedies ever made. One of the greatest comedies of the 90s. And uh, I enjoyed the sequel. I was very excited to see this film. It didn't live up to the original. Uh, but, uh, you know, with what's, you know, what's... Some of those surprises with like the 40th or 50th anniversary, I can't remember, of SNL, and they brought back Wayne and Garth, and I just saw them there, and I was thinking, here is the time to resurrect Michael Mike Myers' career, Dana Carvey' career, and make Wayne's World 3. Just do it now before it's too late. I mean, they're going to make a Bill and Ted movie, I hope, and that movie is long since coming, and no one ever thought they'd ever see that. Why can't we have a Wayne's World 3, at least one more? Come on, guys. You know you have it in you at least one more before you get too old. So there you go. That's all i got to say about that. Uh, in the 90s, there was a big uh, push because The Firm, which I don't have on Blu-ray yet, was such a big success with the J uh, John Grisham that they made a bunch of more of John Grisham's book. This is a nice slip cover. Now, I do have A Time to Kill. I don't know if I'll keep the other Blu-ray because I, I wanted this set mainly because... I love A Time to Kill, which I do own, and I haven't seen a client in a while, and it's a nice slip cover, and it has them all on separate discs and everything, and you get them all on separate discs, which is nice. I'm glad they're not all on one disc. Um, but <clears throat> uh, I never saw The Pelican Brief in the theaters. I wish I did, because when I eventually saw it like 10 years later, I thought The Pelican Brief was an amazing thriller. So I mainly bought this set right now because I wanted to own The Pelican Brief. Uh, but it's nice to have them all together, the John Grisham collection. So there you go, from the 90s. And I would welcome more John Grisham no uh, novels to books, or movies to whatever, whatever. Uh, but who knows if they're ever going to come. Okay, um, I think I'm, yeah, okay. So <laughs> speaking of the 90s, we'll just go through the rest of them somewhat quick. We have Miracle on 34th Street from 1994, a really nice family movie, nice remake. I love the original, and I love this film as well. Uh, just a wonderful Christmas movie to watch with the entire family. We have Get Short, Get Shorty, I mean. Great film from 1995. Uh, Be Cool is not a good sequel, and you probably should skip it. But this is a fine film, and very funny, and, and every, the cast is great, the writing's great, and, uh, and one of the best films directed by Barry Sonnenfeld. One of my favorite film, probably my my favorite film, uh, with starring John Claude Van Damme, and that would be Sudden Death, which is Die Hard in a hockey rink. I saw this movie twice in the theaters. I loved it so much, and it's probably cheesy and goofy and doesn't hold up at all at all. So I got it on Blu-ray because I just really wanted to see Sudden Death again. Uh, I just remember really enjoying it when I saw it over 20 years ago. It probably doesn't hold up as all, but. I really want to see it again, so here it is. Uh, and also from 1995, we have Crimson Tide, a movie that I have re see seen recently on HBO. And I remember seeing this in the theater not really appreciating it when it came out. But then I saw it recently on HBO, and I thought, wow, what a successful, smart thriller where there's no real bad guy, just people working and doing their jobs and trying to figure stuff out. And it's just so interesting, and the dynamic between the actors, you know, just life being life is the bad guy in this film. So glad to have this one part of my collection. Rest in peace to Tony Scott. One of definitely one of his best films. Um, A Walk in the Clouds. Really enjoyed this film from 1995. Ke Keanu Reeves, not the greatest actor, but this is such a beautiful film. And Keanu Reeves is one of my favorite actors. I just I, I love Keanu Reeves, and a uh, really great romantic film that you can enjoy uh, with the people you love. And um, I'm glad to have this one. And I haven't seen it in so many years. So excited to have this one in my collection. Uh, here's a film that I don't think I love. But I really wanted to see it again. Give it another chance. And that would be First Night. I did see this in the theaters. Um, again, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't really remember it all too well. But I got it because I really just wanted to see it again. I remember I remember I liked it when I saw it in the theater. But I remember I didn't love it. Uh, maybe as I got older, I might enjoy it. And give it a chance. So got this one. Here's First Night. And looking forward to one day watching that again. Let's talk about one of my favorite guilty pleasures. And also one of my favorite guilty pleasure Christmas movies. And that would be Jingle All The Way. This is the extended director's cut. I don't know what that even means. <laughs> Do we need more scenes in this film? I don't know. I think the movie is just as stupid and perfect as it needs to be. And But I'd be curious about it now we have the director's cut. Ooh, the Aren't you been wait Aren't you been waiting for the director's cut of... Jingle all the way. Put that cookie down. 
Okay. Uh, from 1997, I got a few films from 1997, so we're going to go with... Uh, these are all uh, really great films. This is a Ridley Scott film, G.I. Jane, Demi Moore, solid uh, film. I have not seen in a while. Again, I wanted to see this again. We have Boogie Nights, which is one of the best films ever made and one of the best films of the 1990s. And I fell in love with P.T. Anderson, the director of this film, and he's become one of my favorite directors thanks to this brilliant film. And then we have Chasing Amy, probably, you know, even though I felt like the main character, she was very annoying in the film. The dialogue is incredible. It's one of the best films directed by Kevin Smith. So you have one of the best films directed by Ridley Scott, one of the best films directed by P.T. Anderson, My Battery is Dying, and one of the best films directed by Kevin Smith. Awesome. 1997. Incredible. I have a few more films to go, but the battery is going to die soon. So I'm just going to hold up these films until the battery dies, and then I'll do the... Uh, so we'll continue on and hopefully have a few more videos, a uh, few more uh, Blu-rays to talk about. Why isn't the battery? The battery said you, the battery said it was going to die. New battery. Don't know how long it's going to last, so let's conclude this video really, really fast. Okay, so I've got a few more movies to talk about from the 1990s, and then I'm going to say goodbye for right now. And let's talk about the Best Picture winner of 1998. Saving... No. Uh, Shakespeare in Love. Okay. I love this film. It's a great film. I'm glad it was nominated. I'm not really happy it won because Saving Private Ryan should have won Best Picture that year in 1998. But this is still a wonderful film, Save, uh, Shakespeare in Love. Fabulous soundtrack, costumes, performances. It's, a, it's, a, it's definitely one of the best films of 1998, just not the best picture. All right, and then from 1999... We're going to go through this really fast. Actually, I actually have four movies to talk about, and then we're going to conclude with a little treat that trickles into the 2000s because um, it's a collector set. So we have The Blair Witch Project, which scared me after the fact, even though I know knew what was going on, or I should say knew that it was fake before watching the film. Uh, there are scenes in this movie that still haunt me to this day, and uh, I remember having fond memories of seeing this with a bunch of friends. We have... American Beauty, definitely one of the best films of the 1990s, and of course the Best Picture winner from 1999, and I, I, I love I love the film. We have The Sixth Sense, who was, which was also nominated in 1999, of course it lost to American Beauty, and then Stir of Echoes, which I actually have a friend of a friend that is in this movie. That actually has a pretty big part in this movie. I don't want to say because that would spoil the movie. But Stir of Echoes is a good, solid thriller. And a good, solid film from the 1990s. I think it got overshadowed because I think The Sixth Sense came out around that time. So people were seeing The Sixth Sense and they forgot about Stir of Echoes. Uh, don't forget about it now. I mean, you've seen Sixth Sense. Watch Stir of Echoes. It's a pretty good pretty good thriller so there is uh those films from 1999 right there and i enjoy these films a lot and uh most of them are horror films they're all and this is pretty horrific too it's a pretty hor horrific film in a different way okay so there it is from the 1990s and finally we're going to conclude with a trilogy of films that kind of trickled on to 2000s but uh, that's all i'm going to talk about the 2000s and this is the austin powers Trilogy for one million dollars. Okay, so uh, 1997, 1999, and 2002. And here's another Mike Myers franchise that I would love to see a fourth film. It's like Wayne's World make a third film. I think the Austin Powers. I mean, what is Mike Myers doing? You know, we love you, Mike Myers. We really do. And uh, we want to see you in another movie of some kind. I mean, if it's an original idea, so be it. I would love to see it. Uh, I, I don't know if he's still on television right now as another character for the Gong Show, because I haven't watched that. I don't know if that got canceled. Did they get canceled? Let me know. I haven't watched it yet. I know Mike Myers is a part of that. But I love Austin Powers. I have fond memories seeing these wonderful films. And I think the original is the best. The second one is the second best. And the third one is a good kind of rehash of the second film. Kind of some of the same jokes all throughout. But I love Austin Powers. And at one time, I actually dressed up with my friends as Awesome Powers. I have pictures to prove it, if you want to see. And I went and saw this in the theaters with my friends, The Spy Who Shagged Me, the sequel in 1999 with my friends. And I got the crowd riled up, and it was so much fun. And I have so many amazing memories of that. Anyways, 
I love Awesome Powers, and this is a nice collector set. And I also love the fact that all th three films have separate discs. I do appreciate that. And they're very colorful, too. Isn't that nice? Isn't that lovely? Isn't that wonderful? Very colorful and beautiful and s silly. Silly, very silly. Okay. Um, that completes uh, this Blu-ray haul. A lot of uh, video, uh, uh, movies were talked about in a very long, short period of time. I hope you've enjoyed this time uh, as I've shared this collection with you, this update, this haul. In the comment box below, please comment and like and share this video and let me know what you thought of the movies of 70 years of cinema. Are these some of your favorites? Do you like some of these movies? Do you love? Do you hate? Let me know and I will see you very soon at the next Blu-ray update of some kind. In the meantime, have a great rest of your day, great rest of your night, and a great rest of your year. This is Chatty Man Chatty, Chatty Movie Chatty, sorry, Movie Man Chatty, bye.